assalam o alaikum welcome to wetlek today the uh, topic of discussion is digestion of food and production of volatile fatty acids first i am going to discuss the digestion of food so uh, first uh, i am going to, uh, first we shall study uh, chemical digestion chemical digestion is actually a process uh, where complex molecules like proteins fats and carbohydrates are broken down into smaller pieces that can be uh, used by our, uh, used by animal body of the animal and this process requires the special proteins which are called enzymes so the chemical digestion of each major nutrient is accomplished by the process of hydrolysis uh, which breaks glycosidic bond in carbohydrates peptide linkage among proteins ester bond among fats phosphodiester bond in nucleic acids and this hydrolysis is catalyzed by enzymes uh, which are of two types the enzymes which are present in the lumen can also cause the hydrolysis of these complex substances and the enzymes that are present at the membranous surface of epithelium uh, can also cause the hydrolysis of uh, these complex substances now let's see the enzymes which are acting within the lumen and uh, their action within the lumen uh, uh, accounts for luminal digestion phase luminal phase digestion actually the enzymes which are present within the lumen and which are hydrolyzing the complex food material uh, originate from the gastrointestinal glands and include uh, salivary glands gastric glands and pancreas and the digestion in this lumen results in uh, incomplete digestion of nutrients and results into a short chain polymers from macro from these macromolecules now let's see the carbohydrate digestion in the luminal phase di digestion uh, there are actually three types of plant carbohydrates these are fibers sugars and starch fibers are not digested by hydrolysis in mammals uh, sugars are complex as uh, sugars like complex sugars dissociate by hydrolysis into simple sugars and starches are the main energy yielding nutrient in the diet of omnivores so in the luminal phase of digestion of carbohydrates only starches are digested because sugars are digested in the next membranous phase so as only starches are digested in the carbohydrate digestion of luminal phase digestion so these starches are digested by an enzyme which is known as alpha amylase and this alpha amylase enzyme is produced either from the pancreas or salivary glands of some species the end result of this phase of digestion is the conversion of starches into disaccharides trisaccharides and oligosaccharides and these disaccharides trisaccharides and oligosaccharides are for, are not further hydrolyzed uh, in the carbohydrate digestion phase of luminal phase digestion now let's see the protein digestion which is occurring in the luminal phase digestion large protein molecules are broken into smaller peptide chains the difference which is between the luminal phase digestion of carbohydrates and proteins is that the protein digestion only needs uh, uh, protein digestion needs more enzymes but carbohydrate carbohydrate digestion only needs uh, needs only one enzyme uh, the reason is because proteins are made up of 20 different types of amino acids and therefore protein digestion needs many enzymes there are further two types of proteolytic enzymes and these are endopeptidase and exopeptidase endopeptidase actually break the protein at some uh, some internal point uh, among the amino acid chains within a protein and they don't produce free amino acids on the other hand exopeptidase release amino acids from terminal of the protein molecule or from the uh, terminal of the amino acids chain of a protein molecule the proteolytic enzymes are secreted from pancreas or stomach glands in the form of inactive zymogens and these are only activated in stomach or intestinal lumen for example in case of stomach pepsinogen is in is in inactive form and it is activated to pepsin in the stomach when it uh, encounters hydrochloric acid present in stomach and similarly trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen which are coming from the pancreas get activated in the small intestine when they encounter enterokinase and this enterokinase then converts uh, this trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen to trypsin and chymotrypsin molecule uh, trypsin and chymotrypsin now let's come to the membranous phase digestion enzymes are found uh, enzy enzymes are bound chemically to the surface of surface epithelium of the small intestine the polymers that have been produced as a result of protein digestion or carbohydrate digestion in the uh, luminal phase digestion uh, cannot be absorbed across the epithelium so the uh, enzymes that are bound chemically to the surface of surface epithelium of small intestine uh, 
uh, breaks these short chains po chain polymers into monomers and then these monomers can easily be absorbed across the epithelium so in this way membranous phase digestion actually occurs the enzyme the enzymes which are uh, bound chemically to the surface of epithelium of small intestine are synthesized by enterocytes and are transported to the luminal surface the enzymes are bound only on the epithelium but they are uh, facing the lum lumen so in this way we can say th that these enzymes are synthesized by enterocytes and are transported to the luminal surface some of these enzymes like maltase uh, converts gluco uh, uh, converts maltose into glucose uh, glucose isomaltase and sucrase uh, isomaltase sucrase and lactase convert isomaltose sucrose and lactose uh, into glucose fructose and galactose similarly peptidases are also present on the surface epithelium of small intestine and these peptidases hydrolyze the peptide products of luminal phase digestion and yield free amino acids that can be absorbed uh, easily across the epithelium uh, some of the long chain peptides are incompletely digested into dipeptides and tripeptides and they are absorbed as it is in the cell these dipeptidases and tri uh, dipeptides and tripeptides are then hydrolyzed uh, by the intracellular peptides and these intracellular peptides then digest them into uh, hydrolyze them into uh, free amino acids and then these free amino acids are finally absorbed in the blood now let's discuss some uh, general points about fermentation fermentive digestion occurs in special compartments that are placed either before or after the small intestine and stomach the compartments which are placed before stomach are called fore stomach and are developed in ruminants like cattle and cam and camels while the compartments that are placed after small intestine are called hind gut like cecum and colon and these are uh, present in uh, non ruminants like horses and rabbits so fermentive digestion in ruminants occurs in rumen uh, while in non ruminants like horses and rabbits it occurs in cecum and colon uh, while canines don't uh, don't need the fermentive process uh, to uh, and they have simple colons in the cecum and colon of horses and rabbits uh, the ph and flow rate is low as compared with that of the stomach and this feature helps them to maintain the microbial population to constant size uh, by providing them optimum conditions for fermentation in the stomach of non ruminants like horses and rabbits uh, the conditions uh, like ph and other conditions are not favorable for the uh, survival of the uh, my microbes that cause fermentation so the stomach of uh, horses and rabbits is uh, doesn't uh, cause the process of fermentation and the ph and environmental conditions in cecum and colon of horse and uh, uh, rabbit uh, are uh, optimum for microbial uh, popula population maintenance none of the cell wall materials is subjected to the hydrolysis by glandular digestive enzymes present in the stomach of non ruminants so the components like cellulose hemicellulose and pectin are subjected to hydrolytic action of uh, a complex of my my microbial enzymes called cellulase so these components are broken only by the microbial population and not by the glandular enzymes that are secreted in the stomach so this enzyme system actually releases polysaccharides and oligosaccharides from complex carbohydrates and then further metabolizes these oligo and polysaccharides uh, prior to their absorption by the organism lignin is one of the component that uh, lignin is the only component that is resistant to the digestion by both mammalian and microbial enzymes so only small portion of lignin is digested by either of these processes horses have large cecum and it occupies 15.6% of total alimentary canal of horse and here extensive microbial fermentation of plant material takes place similarly rabbits also have a well developed cecum now let's come to the production of volatile fatty acids as we know that the production of volatile fatty acids occurs only in rumen and colon so whenever a carbohydrate material enters the rumen or colon it is attacked by the uh, bacteria which are present in rumen and colon and this attack requires the physical attachment of bacteria to the surface of uh, these particles or these carbohydrate materials after the physical attachment of bacteria to the carbohydrate material uh, there occurs a release of hydrolytic microbial enzymes 
and this enzymatic action then causes hydrolysis of the carbohydrate material uh, and in this way this enzymatic reaction uh, liberates glucose and other monosaccharides and short chain polysaccharides into the fluid phase outside the microbial cell bodies so this enzymatic reaction is liberating glucose monosaccharides and polysaccharides into the fluid phase outside the microbial cell bodies Although these all substances are free in the solution, uh, but these products of microbial enzyme action don't become immediately available to the host animal. Uh, rather, they are quickly subjected to the further metabolism by the microbial mass. So these substances uh, further undergo uh, metabolism by microbes and are not available for the host to, to be absorbed in the body. So once these substances are within the microbial cells, uh, glucose enters the glycolytic or embedded Meerhof pathway. So glucose is catabolized through this pathway and each molecule of glucose is catabolized to two molecules of pyruvic acids. Sorry pyruvate. Each glu uh, glucose molecule yields two molecules of pyruvate. Similarly, in the formation of pyruvate from glucose, uh, there also occurs the, uh, uh, the conversion of two molecules of adenosine uh, tri triphosphate from adenosine diphosphate. So, two molecules of uh, ADP uh, are being converted into two molecules of ATP. And similarly, two molecules of NAD are also reduced to two, uh, two molecules of NADH. So, catabolism of glucose uh, through embedded Meerhof pathway yields two molecules of pyruvic acid, uh, two sorry, two molecules of pyruvate, uh, two molecules of NADH from NAD, and two molecules of ATP from ADP. The ATP, the energy which is formed in the form of ATP by this reaction, is not directly available to the host animal. Instead, it is the major source of energy for the maintenance and growth of microbes. So this ATP is the major source of maintenance of uh, microbial growth. As fermentive digestion is an anaerobic process, therefore a different mechanism must be provided for the oxidation of NADH and other reduced cofactors. If such a mechanism were not available, then all the cofactors that have been oxidized uh, would soon be reduced and in this way metabolism would come to a, a halt or metabolism will be uh, inhibited. As this oxidation of NADH and other reduced enzyme cofactors is occurring in the absence of oxygen or in anaerobic process, so some other compound must serve as an electron sink for this oxidation of enzyme cofactors. So in this fermentative digestion process, the pyruvate acts as an electron sink and it is being further reduced uh, to provide for the regeneration of NAD and in this way NADH is uh, oxidized and the, it also and the reduction of pyruvate also causes the removal of excess electrons with an additional yield of ATP. So in fermentative digestion pyruvate is an electron sink which is being reduced and regenerates NAD and causes the removal of excess electrons with an additional yield of ATP. NAD is also regen regenerated by the reduction of carbon dioxide to methane and these all processes are described in this diagram in, the, uh, in this picture. So all these pathways uh, eventually lead to the major end, uh, end product of the fermentative digestion of carbohydrates, uh, the volatile fatty acids. The primary volatile fatty acids are acetic acid, propionic acid and butyric acid and they are referred as dissociated ions of acetate, propionate and butyrate respectively. Other quantitatively minor but metabolically important volatile fatty acids are valeric acid, isovaleric acid, isobutyric acid and 2-methylbutyric acid. So these volatile fatty acids are also present among the primary volatile fatty acids but they are quantitatively less than that of uh, than primary volatile fatty acids. As methane is produced through the reduction of carbon dioxide, uh, so in the rumen methane production is actually facilitated by methanogenic bacteria uh, like methanobacterium ruminatium. This bacterium is highly sensitive to the changing conditions in the rumen and when conditions are unfavorable for its survival then methane production is reduced and this reduced methane production shifts the metabolic pathway towards propionic acid production. 
सम कंडीशन दैट कैन सप्रेस द मिथेनोजेनिक स्पीशीज आर हाई लेवल ऑफ फीड इन टेक यूज ऑफ फाइनली ग्राउंड और पेलेटेड फीड्स एंड हाई ग्रेन और हाई स्टार्च डाइट्स सो अंडर दीज सर्कमस्टांसिस द रेट ऑफ मिथेन प्रोडक्शन इज रिड्यूस्ड एंड इट रिजल्ट इन अ लोअर रेट ऑफ एसिटिक एसिड प्रोडक्शन विद अ रिजल्टिंग इंक्रीज इन द प्रोपाइनिक एसिड प्रोडक्शन रेट the relative concentrations of the volatile fatty acids have an important nutritional and metabolic consequences so typically the ruminal acetic acid propionic acid and butyric acid concentration ratios in ruminants uh, range from 70 ratio 20 ratio 10 respectively uh, for animals uh, eating high forage diets and the animals that eat high grain diets uh, the ruminal acetic acid concentration is 60 uh, propionic acid concentration is 30 and butyric acid concentration is 10 so these values are actually uh, relative proportions and these are not absolute amounts the total amount of volatile fatty acids that are produced with high starch diet uh, are usually ha- uh, much higher than that produced with the high fiber diet so high starch diet produces relatively large amount of volatile fatty acids uh, than the higher fiber diets so the total acetic acid production is higher with a high starch diet than with high fiber diet even though the uh, even though the acetic acid production relative to other volatile fatty acids may be reduced but its production of uh, uh, production of acetic acid is higher with high starch diet than with high fiber diet now let's talk about the importance of these volatile fatty acids volatile fatty acids are the end products or waste products of anaerobic microbial metabolism uh, just as the carbon dioxide is waste product of aerobic metabolism if these volatile fatty acids are allowed to accumulate they can suppress the fermentative process by lowering the ph of the gut or fore stomach so the animal maintains conditions for fermentation uh, both by buffering the ph changes and by removing volatile fatty acids from the gut by absorption so the benefit of these volatile fatty acids is the chemical energy that is contained in them and this chemical energy is uh, provided to the host in ruminants and other large herbivores uh, these volatile fatty acids are the ma- major energy fuels and they play the same role as is played by glucose in omnivorous monogastric animals